Consumers support and vote with their wallet. This is an adage that seems to be as old as commerce itself. As gamers, we hold tremendous sway over multiple industries. We are at the apex of a hundred billion dollars of commerce. It is that reason that I fully believe that we as gamers should support, aka buy, AMD this year and this product line. And I'm going to give you five reasons why gamers should support AMD. I am the graying tech. I am a gaming insider. And if you are interested in learning how to improve your gaming performance, start now by clicking that <laughs> by clicking that subscribe button. AMD is hungry. I have said this now in three videos in a row, and it is still as true as it was in the first. Their hunger is driving them to take risks. And whether those risks are new architecture, deliberate chip design, HMB, launching a console, another console, a PC GPU, a PC CPU, or in the case of Threadripper, when they came out with Threadripper, Intel laughed them off the stage saying, <laughs> we don't have to glue our processors together. Well, you see, now they actually are. Intel also said nobody needs that many cores. Nobody is going to want to do that many things on a system at the same time. And now we can see the burgeoning industry of streaming can utilize those extra cores while still giving you great performance. So AMD found at least one use case, Intel. And the fact that AMD is taking those risks means that they are trying to move the industry forward and we are going to benefit because of that. AMD over the years has also proven to be highly consumer centric and consumer minded. They focus on open standards instead of setting up proprietary standards. They focus on open collaborations, not focusing and forcing game developers to hard code to their hardware and their APIs. I'm looking at you, NVIDIA Hairworks. AMD has also been highly focused on winning in the categories that matter the most. Yes, we all love the Halo product, as we call it in marketing, or the crown jewel, or the RGB-filled nightmare that strikes fear into those who see it on PC Master Race. But in reality, in the gaming world, most gaming PCs are less than $1,500. The typical price range is somewhere between eight to 1200. And that's the exact innovation space that AMD has focused the majority of their efforts. And AMD is highly focused on driving the price to performance ratio in that specific segment of the market. And that is helping all gamers benefit, not just those uh, at the very, very top end. Additionally, they are pulling down the top end. Now, I took a lot of heat in the Zen 3 video where I tried to justify AMD's price increase. You are going to get better performance out of that chip, and it's not the right thing to do to compare gen on gen or tier on tier. In other words, a 3600 versus a 5600. Instead, look at what a 5600 is getting you in terms of performance and compare that to the price that you would have to pay for an alternative from Intel or that you would have had previously paid with an AMD system. And lo and behold, we are starting to see linked benchmarks that essentially show a 5600X is at the performance level of a 10900K and in single threaded performance is actually out gunning it at almost two to $300 less than Intel's best chip in the market. So they're pulling down that performance right in the exact tier that most gamers will be in. As such, do you believe that Nvidia will drop its prices? Or do you believe that AMD has gotten too greedy and gone too high? Comment down below on which of those you think might be the case. Now, I got two more reasons why you as a gamer should support AMD. The first, I have seen both AMD and Intel throw their weight around. I have seen them make decisions that aren't always in the best interest of system integrators and AIBs. They have a huge war chest that they are willing to use in order to basically get what is best for Intel and best for Nvidia. Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily totally shady. AMD certainly does this as well. Maybe not to the extent, 
that Intel and NVIDIA does, but it hurts consumers most of all. And I believe this is all designed to drive towards one singular goal. Now, a lot of people who are way smarter than I am have already shown that we are moving towards what is called a fog computing world. This is going to be the next battleground for gamers. Now, I know we've all heard of cloud, right? Cloud gaming. And we know what local gaming is. Fog is right in between. Now, this could be okay so long as it doesn't end up like the true Netflix of gaming. Everybody would love to have a subscription to gaming services, but then when you think about what happened with Netflix and Hulu and YouTube and Twitch and Disney Plus and Prime Video and like 16 other subscription services that actually amount to more dollars being spent, that's not the gaming future that we necessarily want. But it certainly is a future that some of the biggest players do seem to want to do. AMD has made some recent acquisitions in this space as well, but I'm seeing AMD focusing more heavily on the actual local system and making sure that your local processing is good. Now, don't get me wrong. None of these companies are our friends. They are in business to benefit shareholders and stockholders and to make sure that they get a paycheck. And I am completely fine with that. What I want to make sure though is that competition still happens. If we really are moving to this cloud environment, we need to make sure that all of these partners are playing against each other and not playing against us, the gamers. It is to our benefit to make sure that we continue to have alternatives to that cloud ecosystem to support companies who are still putting out good products and not just assuming that we're gonna do everything from a streaming service. Through two presentations now, AMD has announced numerous innovations and improvements. When Ampere launched, I talked about what AMD needed to do in order to stay competitive, specifically focusing on the software that Nvidia had announced. So let's revisit that topic in the video I'm gonna publish in just a few days.